that music say? Yes, sir, Amos, that music say, Good health to all, from Rexall. The stores with the orange and blue sign. Yes, 10,000 independent Rexall druggists at the stores with the orange and blue sign bring you transcribed the Amos and Andy Show, written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, featuring Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Amanda Randolph, Roy Glenn, Tommy Moore, Eddie Marr, Amos Reese, Charlie Cantor, Jeff Alexander's music, yours truly, Harlow Wilcox, and starring radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll. Amos and Andy! How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I am Freeman Gosden. I guess you know you can save a lot of money in any month at your Rexall family drugstore. But I just want to remind you about some very special bargains during March. You'll find these savings listed in the Rexall ad in the current Life, Look, Collier's Saturday Evening Post and Country Gentleman. You'll find two full pages of reduced prices and special offers and important everyday needs. The more carefully you read this ad, the more you can save during March at Rexall Drugstores Everywhere. Well, tomorrow is Sapphire's birthday. Knowing the kingfish, she's afraid he might forget it. So she and her mama, who is seated at the piano, are hinting rather broadly. you two up to there? Why, George, don't you get what we're singing about? Well, the closest thing I can figure is that some old gal named Lala is having a birthday. Huh? <laughs> don't be so stupid. Tomorrow's Sapphire's birthday. It's a happy occasion, you fathead. <laughs> of course, George. Don't you realize tomorrow's my birthday? Well, I don't see why you get so excited about something that comes around as many times as that is. I don't... <laughs> you old four-flusher, I know exactly what you want to give her tomorrow for her birthday. Nothing. That's what you'll give her. Nothing. And I wanted to keep it as a surprise. <laughs> you know, George, in 25 years of marriage, I ain't never got a decent present from you yet. What do you mean? How about last year? I'll give you that beautiful dinner ring. Huh. You got that ring sent in box tops to Space Patrol. <laughs> Did not know such thing. Oh, no. It's the only dinner ring I ever seen with a compass in it. <laughs> oh, Mama, it's no use talking to you. Every year, I just hopes against hope he'll do something nice for me on my birthday. Well, now, wait a minute, honey. It ain't till tomorrow. I might get you something yet. George Stevens? You is about the meanest, most selfish man I ever met. Come on, Mama, I'm going in the bedroom. <laughs> Holy mackerel, she crying. Well, I just can't stand by and watch her be disappointed on her birthday again. No, sir, I'll get some money and buy her something nice. Yeah, the thing to do is to go to work. Unfortunate for me, I know just the boy to go to work on, too. <laughs> Kingfish, uh, I just come down to the lodge to... Well, hello there, Brother Andy. Well, Kingfish, uh, why is you sitting there with your head in your hand? Well, Andy, I was a sick man. I, I've been needing an emergency operation for two weeks now, and I had to put it off because I don't have the money for a down payment. Hmm. Well, that's a shame, Kingfish. Yeah, I went to the doctor's credit bureau, but they said I was such a poor risk that they wouldn't perform the operation unless I put up my liver as collateral. <laughs> That is a shame. I didn't even know you were sick. Well, then I wasn't feeling so well last month, so I went to my doctor for a checkup. Yeah. 
He got out that black rag and wrapped it around my arm to take my blood pressure. Mm -hmm. He pumped twice and squirted mercury all over the floor. <laughs> oh, mackerel. Yeah, first he thought it was my nervous system. He thought my reflexes was too active. So he set me down in a chair in front of him to test my reflexes. And he hit me on the knee with the hammer. Yeah, what happened? I kicked over the chair he was sitting in. Oh. <laughs> By this time, he knew that something was wrong, so he sent me to a specialist. No fooling. What kind of specialist? Eye, ear, nose, throat, and cholera. <laughs> you has got the cholera? Hey, that's serious, ain't it? I'll see it is, Andy. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that you got the cholera, Kingfish. I wish there was something I could do. Well, of course there's something you can do, you big boob. You can loan me the money for the emergency operation. I need a hundred dollars for the cholera ectomy. <laughs> well, of course, if you were sick, why, well, I'll lend you the money for the operation, but I think I'd better talk to Amos first. Well, now, Andy, look here. How could you mistrust me like that? Don't you think I'm sick? Don't you think I is dying? Don't you think I need the operation? If you ask me, the only thing you need is a hundred bucks. <laughs> I ain't giving you no hundred dollars to have your colic removed, I tell you that. Now, look, and I'm going to tell you the truth here. Now, look here, me and you as friends, now, here are cars on the table. Tomorrow is Sapphire's birthday, and I got to get her something nice. Can you loan me a hundred dollars? A hundred dollars? Now, look, and I'll pay you back. I'll give you a certified IOU. Now, now, please, boy, it means everything to me. Come on, will you please do it for me? Well, all right, Kingfish. I'll get out to the bank with you and draw out the money. Oh, thank you, Andy. You done saved my life, boy. So tomorrow is Sapphire's birthday, huh? Tell me, Kingfish, how old is she? Well, Andy, I think she is lapping over into her 40s. Hmm. <laughs> if you ask me, I think she's slapping over into her 50s. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, Andy, give me a hundred bucks. Well, I'll go across town and buy Sapphire a present, and then I'll... <laughs> Hey, Bud. Bud. Come over here a minute, will you? Uh, you, uh, you call me, mister? Yeah, friend. I, uh, I want to talk to you. Step in the alley here. Uh, yeah, alley. Uh, uh, what can I do for you? Uh, how would you like to buy a fur piece? A uh, fur piece? Uh-huh. Genuine sheared beaver. Yeah, that's a nice looking coat there. Yeah. Feel the fur. No, the nice and soft. Let me blow in the thing that one. <laughs> Didn't no hairs come out there, did it? <laughs> yeah. Look at that, it got a nice line into it, too. And look at the label in there the East Lennox Fur Company. Uh, what you doing with a coat like that, mister? That's my company. We're liquidating the business. Uh, uh, do you always liquidate an alley? Uh, yeah. yeah, it uh, cuts down on the overhead. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, look, fella, uh, this coat is yours for $400. $400? Well, mister, I ain't got that kind of money. All I got is a hundred. A hundred, huh? Well, I'm not one to let a few dollars stand in the way of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> It's yours for a hundred. Oh, that's great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here he is. Right here. here, here here's your hundred dollars. Okay. Here's your coat. So long and good luck. Hmm. What a break. I got a four hundred dollar coat for a hundred dollars. Funny kind of a fur salesman. I wonder why he held his hand over his face all the time he talked to me. <laughs> oh, well, I guess he's the shy type. Yeah. <laughs> evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, one of the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. We've done that because we recommend and sell Rexall drug products. One of these fine products is free this month. You get a 60-cent tube of Rexall ammoniated toothpaste without cost when you buy any of three Rexall antiseptics. Rexall MI-31 or... Rexol Cleanzo Antiseptic or Rexol Mouthwash with Chlorophyll. Take your choice 
and get Rexall ammoniated toothpaste free. And look for many other splendid savings in the two-page Rexall advertisement in the current Life, Look, Collier's, Saturday Evening Post, and Country Gentleman. Read the advertisement and save in March. At Rexall Drug Stores, everywhere. Citation the time he got stuck in the starting gate there. <laughs> oh, but George, we're so excited. Oh, it's such a wonderful birthday present. Well, Sapphire, I figured it was time that you had a new coat. Uh, that old one of yours don't look so good. That uh, Palomino dyed muskrat. You know? <laughs> oh, Georgie, I can just give you a big hug. Me too. Come here, son-in-law. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, couldn't we just shake hands, Mama? The last time you hugged me, you squeezed me so hard, you dehydrated my gallbladder here. Oh, George, I just can't wait to wear it. And just look at the label. The East Lennox Fur Company. That's a fine store. George, where in the world did you get the money to buy a beautiful coat like this? Well, I've been scrimping and saving, honey. For the past six months, I, I've been going without lunch. Oh, George, going without lunch? Yeah, it was pretty tough at times. Last week, during the game of pool, I keeled right over on the table. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, it took him a half hour to get my head out of the side pocket. Uh... <laughs> but, George, George, just going without lunches, how could you save that much money? Well, I've been saving other ways, too. For one thing, I ain't been having my suits pressed. I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but lately my knees have been so baggy, I, I look like I'm walking down the street in a crouch. <laughs> well, George, I don't know how you did it, but it certainly is a wonderful present. Well, I'm glad you like it, my darling. Well, I think I'll get on down to the lodge hall. Oh, but before you go, son-in-law, I want to take back all the nasty things I ever said to you. I see you in a different light now. You do, Mama? Yes. You're a bald-headed, ugly old man, but I love you. <laughs> well, thank you, Mama. That's the nicest thing you ever said to me. You were sweet. Let me see what's in the morning paper here. French cabinet wall. Hmm. That thing fell down again. <laughs> and then let's see what else. Good morning, Berlin. Oh, hi, Kingfish. I just sitting here in the office reading the morning paper to myself. Yeah, well, I'll sit across the desk here from you. Yeah. Andy, I got something to tell you. I was walking down. Uh... Say, I'm reading the paper. Would you get that, Kingfish? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, hello. Oh, hello, Emma. Oh, I see you called with Sapphire happy birthday, and she wasn't home, huh? Yeah, well, she must be out shopping. Hmm, what's this headline? Uh, Amos, let me tell you about the beautiful present I got, Sapphire. East Lennox Fur Company burglarized. Oh, uh, yeah, Amos, uh, she crazy about it. It's a beautiful fur coat. A uh, lovely thing. Uh, sheared beaver. Among the missing items was a luxurious sheared beaver coat. Oh, uh, yes, Amos, it's a, 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 a hold the phone. Uh, Andy, would you stop reading about the fur robbery while I was telling Amos about the beautiful fur coat? I didn't give him away for a birthday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sorry, King. Uh, hello, Emma. Uh, yeah, I got a wonderful break. Uh, I run into a fellow on the street. Uh, what's that, Emma? The thief was described by the police as being five foot six. Oh, uh, yeah, Emma. He was a nice little fellow. Uh, he wore a checkered cap. With beady eyes and a scar on his face. Uh, that's right, Emma. Beady eyes and a scar on his face. <laughs> you see, uh, 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 Emma, would you hold the phone again? Uh... What's the matter, Kingfish? Uh, Andy, how did you know that the fella I bought the fur coat from uh, had a scar on his face? Well, I don't know nothing about him. I'm reading here about the robbery at the East Lennox Fur Company. Hello, Amos. 
I'll call you back. Yeah, I won't keep this line open. I might have to call the travel bureau for a quick trip to Mexico. <laughs> Andy, let me see that newspaper. There you is. Darren robbery, burglary, beaver coat, short fellow with scar. Holy mackerel, Andy. I done bought Sapphire a hot fur coat. <laughs> yeah, I got the thing from a fellow in the alley last night, and now he turns out to be a crook. Holy smoke. If the police ever see Sapphire wearing that thing on the street, they're going to be trouble. What you going to do? Oh, me, Andy. I'm going right over to see Calhoun, my lawyer. You know, Andy, I feel just like a matzo ball in a bowl of consomme. <laughs> Not only is I in the soup, but I ain't long for this world. Oh. <laughs> Calhoun, I'm glad I caught you, boy. High as in a spot. Yeah. I ain't never been in such a mess. I thunk it over and I decided to seek the advice of a competent, reputable lawyer. What made you change your mind? <laughs> no, no, I mean you. You don't need to flatter me, Kingfish. I'm crummy, but I'm cheap. Now, what's your problem? Well, now, Calhoun, look here. I done give my wife a fur coat for her birthday. Mm. Now, she is crazy about the thing, but I done found out it was stolen. Mm. Now, if she wears it out on the street, they're going to throw my wife in jail. Well, the thing to do is to lift the coat out of the apartment while Sapphire and her mama ain't home. That way, they'll think it was stolen. No, no, that ain't no good, Calhoun. They, they would know there was something phony if it just happened to disappear. Well, then, just have the fur coat stolen while they're both there. Oh, yeah. You mean get a third party to stage a robbery? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Look, and to make it look realistic, I could even have the fella slug me. Yeah, that's the stuff. Yeah, but who is I going to get to do this job? There's got to be somebody that Sapphire don't know. Well, uh, I might be able to dig up someone. I couldn't promise for sure. Well, you try, and yeah, I tell you what. You try to get somebody, and I'll get a hold of Andy and Lightning and some of the other large brothers, and I'll have them try to dig up somebody to stage a phony robbery. Yeah. yeah, one of them is bound to come through. Yeah, with everybody trying, you ought to come up with someone. Yeah, oh, yeah, what a mess, Calhoun. You know, you was lucky you never got married. Yeah, I guess I is. But I was engaged once, though. Yeah? Yes, sir, Kingfish. I was engaged to a gal that used to get shot out of a cannon in a circus. Yeah, well, whatever happened to her? Well... One night over in Harrisburg, they aimed the cannon wrong, and she missed the net. As she glanced off the box seat, hit the wall, bounced up against the lion's cage, glanced off of that, and then landed up against the tent pole. Well, right then and there, I broke the engagement. Yeah, well, how come, Calhoun? Man, I don't want no ricochet, baby. <laughs> Shifty! Shifty! Well, this Calhoun talking. Yeah, I'd like you to do a little job for me about 10.30 this evening. Oh, it's a friend of mine, the Kingfish. Yeah. Well, now, hear what I want to do. Uh, hello, Mr. Houlihan. Uh, this is Andy Brown. Say, my pal, the Kingfish of the Lodge, needs somebody to steal a beaver coat out of his apartment tonight. Yeah, that's right. And to make it realistic, you can slug him and everything. Now, here's the address. Uh, hello. Hello, is this Mike? Uh, this is Lightning calling. Uh, is you free tonight around 10.30? I'd like to have you do a hold-up job for me, if you would. <laughs> This is your money saver, Harlow Wilcox, with some of the biggest bargains that ever balanced the family budget. You'll find them all in the Rexall ad for March, in the current life, look, Collier, Saturday Evening Post, and Country Gentleman. Here are three examples. Rexall aspirin, the bottles of 200, regularly 87 cents, now only 66 cents. Caranome deodorant cream for women, just half price. And stag deodorant cream for men, half price. These are just a few examples of the special offers during March. So, friends, be sure to see the others in the current Rexall ad in Life, Look, Collier, Saturday Evening Post, and Country Gentlemen. 
Use this two-page ad to plan your savings for the month of March. And then march right down to your Rexall Family Drug Store, the store with the orange and blue sign. Thirty. I wonder if any of my friends has done got a fake hold up man for me. Just like them boys that let me down at a time like this. George, ain't you coming to bed? It's almost ten thirty. Mama's been asleep for over an hour. Oh, your mama's asleep, huh? Well, wake up. I don't want her the old goat to miss nothing here. <laughs> Why, George, what you talking about? Well, it's early, honey, and after all, you know, someone might uh, drop in. Oh, George, don't be silly. I'm going in the bedroom, and if you want to. Don't nobody move. I got you covered. Oh, gosh! It's a hold-up man, and he's got a gun! Yeah, you see, I told you somebody might drop in here, yeah. <laughs> oh, George, what are you with all these after? Well, I don't know, but I'll find out. A uh, hold-up man, by any chance, is you after my wife's new fur coat that's hanging in the hall closet there with Jane Locke? <laughs> yeah, that's right, sweetheart. Now, stand aside. George, don't let him take my new coat. Stay to it. Yeah, hold up, man. Yeah? Does you realize that stealing the fur coat is naughty? Shut up! Uh, yeah, so yeah, so I'll open the closet door for you there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's the one in the middle there, the coat in the middle. Yeah, this is what I want. And, Baldy? Yeah? Here's a little something for you. Compliments of a friend. <clears throat> oh! <laughs> Yeah. Uh, where's my bridge? Uh, uh, <laughs> here, here it is on the mantel. George, quick, quick, call the police oh, right honey, away. Hurry up. Honey, it's 10 30 at night. That's pretty late to be calling the police. <laughs> it might wake them up, honey. <laughs> I'll tell, uh, tell you what I'll do. I'll write them a nice long letter in the morning. But, George, I want my stick. Put your hands up. This is a stick up. Oh, George, another hold up, man. Yeah, this must be their busy season. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, you was too late. The other guy got the coat. Uh, you can look in the closet and see for yourself. Let's see here. Wait a minute. There's a fur coat there. That's my old coat. Don't take that. I came up for a coat, and I ain't leaving without one. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Baldy, take this. <laughs> oh! is terrible. Where did that bridge go this time? <laughs> oh, here it is. It landed in the ashtray. Oh, George. George, this is awful. They got both of my coats. Oh, Sapphire, never mind the coats. Help me into the bedroom. Thank <laughs> heavens, the worst is over. No, oh, nobody move. Uh, this is the sticker. <laughs> Let me put my bridge in my pockets here. <laughs> now, look, mister, look. Uh, mister, forget the whole thing. Beat it, mister, beat it. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> I come up here for a fuck coat, and I ain't going without it. Well, well, now, now, look, it's gone. Now, get on out of here. There ain't nothing here. Uh, now, don't get cozy with me. I come up for a coat, and if I don't get one, I'm liable to get nasty. <laughs> Look, mister, look, mister, the only fur coat left is this old rabbit skin of my mother-in-law's in there. You wouldn't want that. Listen, if it's fuzzy, hand it off. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, mister, there you is. Now get out of here. Oh, no. We mustn't forget nothing, must we? Oh! <laughs> The radiator broke my fall. <laughs> oh, George, this has been the most terrible thing that's ever happened. Three robbers in a row. Yeah, we better oh. start borrowing coats from the neighbors. This thing can go on all night. When you... Oh, yeah, 
Yeah, Sam. As by the time the six robbers showed up there, the kingfish was in pretty sad shape. Yeah, well, Andy, this is a mess, all right. The kingfish buying that stolen coat. Yeah, well, what is he going to do with the coat now? Well, he's out right now. He decided to take the coat back to the East Lennox Fur Company and explain the whole thing. Yeah, well, why, Andy? It's almost 10 o'clock at night. The store is closed. He shouldn't be running around the streets with a stolen fur coat. Well, uh, Kingfish talked to the watchman over at the store, and he said that the owner of the East Lennox Fur Company is a Mrs. Tom Jackson. Kingfish going to take the coat right up to her apartment and give it back to her, you see. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's the smart thing to do or not. Mrs. Jackson might not understand. Call the police. Yeah, you're right. I just hope it turns out all right. Well, that is the whole story, Miss Jackson. As soon as I found out it was a stolen coat, I brung it right up here. Well, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Stevens, and, and I think it's very nice of you to do this. Now, just make out a check. Uh, I want to give you some kind of reward. Oh, no, no, I don't want no reward. I just want to do the honest thing. <laughs> well, I'm certainly happy to get it back. It's such a beautiful coat. Just feel this fur. Why is it? There you, Sapphire! What is this? Sapphire, Mama! Well, so we caught you red-handed, George. Yeah, we knew there was something fishy about them phony robberies last night. So, you had my fur coat stolen out the apartment to give it to this young hubby, you beast, you! Well, well, now, just a minute, here. Sapphire, hand me that beast! Oh, now, wait a minute. Hold it, Mama. Hold it. Hey, this, you bow! <laughs> Just hand me my bridge and let me get out of here. <laughs> and now, here's a lady to help you balance your beauty budget. Cosmetic expenses do count up. Some of us need a new lipstick and face powder every few weeks. That's why you'll be glad to save more than one-fourth on Ann Delafield's lipstick and powder with foundation built in during March at Rexall Drugstores. You get lipstick and powder with foundation built in a two seventy five value for only a dollar ninety eight. So be sure to save more than one fourth on the Ann Delafield combination offer lipstick and face powder with foundation built in during March at Rexall Drugstores. And see the other March bargains in the current Rexall ad in Life, Look, Collier, Saturday Evening Post, and Country Gentleman. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, rely on your Rexall family druggist. And when you visit him, would you be kind enough to say that Amos and Andy sent you? Thank you, and good night. But before we go, this is Charles Carell saying that this coming week is the 42nd birthday of the Girl Scouts. I just want to remind you to give this fine organization your support in every way you can in your community. Thank you. See you next Sunday. This is your Rexall family druggist reminding you to read the Rexall ad for March in the current Life, Look, Collier's Saturday Evening Post and Country Gentleman. This ad gives two pages of extraordinary values during March at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Be sure to be with us at the same time next Sunday when your Rexall druggist will again present The Amos and Andy Show, transcribed and directed by Cliff Howell. Stay tuned now for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately over most of these same CBS radio stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> 